says, if you're not careful, you're going to start making sins. But you know, the Satan doesn't come to you with Chilul Shabbat right away. He comes to you with small little things. He says, listen, salad, you can buy it from anywhere. Salad, you can buy it from Starbucks, this box, that box, Subway. You can buy it anywhere. Yeah, but the rabbi said that there's worms. There's worms, and you know, the Greens don't have to wash their uh, salads like the Jews. They don't have to put it in salt water. They don't have to put it in soap water. They don't have to do it. So it's going to be worms, and it's a sin. Yet Sarah tells you, come on, you believe him? Look at the salad. It looks delicious. You think there's uh, worms in it? If there's worms, they already died. Yet Sarah comes to you with a small little thing. It looks like it's not a big deal. Yet Sarah comes to you and says, no, come on, you're coming to the party? It's your food. Come on, it's your best friend. He's having his uh, vert. He's having a celebration. He just got a zivug. You're not going to go. He's like, no, but come on. There's going to be modesty over there. His wife is not exactly the most modest person in the world. And her mom is even less modest. I'm going to go see that. He's like, no, come on. He's your best friend since kindergarten. You're not going to go see your best friend. Wish him mazal tov. What kind of friend of you? Small little thing. It looks like a small sin. What is this like? This is like, you ever see no circuses? circus you have this big elephant thousands of pounds it's bigger than five cars elephant huge giant but the trainer has him on a tiny little dog leash you ever notice that giant thousands of pounds elephant and the trainer brings him to the circus with a tiny little leash come on little pushy come 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 elephant can eat the guy if he really wants to he can just go like this the guy flies across the circus he becomes a circus why is the elephant going why is the elephant listening to him why is he listening to him tiny little leash this leash even if the, even if the guy is as strong as the guy that pulls planes with his teeth the elephant wants he breaks the leash why is he coming with this tiny little leash same thing like Ayetzara. Ayetzara is the same thing as the trainer. He trained us. He trained us since we were little. When you were born, you were only born with the Yetzara. Yetzara Tov didn't come until your Bar Mitzvah or Bat Mitzvah. So that means that since you were a baby, little baby, Yetzara has been training you with tiny little sins. First sin was go slap Ima in the face, three years old. What's she going to do? So he goes, you go, Tach! And he starts laughing. <laughs> he thinks it's nothing. It's cute. He's a little three years old. It's actually kind of cute. It's funny. The father's laughing. First thing he does, he slaps Zima. Next thing you know, the Abba gets it also. He thinks it's cute. Everybody thinks it's cute. It's funny. <laughs> Yet Sarah says, good, good, good. Get, get used to these small little things. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's cute. Get, get away with it while you can. Next thing you know, no, no, no. There's chocolate in a store. Take it. Put it in your pocket. Six years old. Put a little chocolate in his pocket. Stole it from the store. No, no one knows. Yitzhara knows he knows. He's going to remember it 30 years later that he put in the chocolate. Abba doesn't know. Ima doesn't know. Yitzhara knows. He's training them little by little. By the time he's 13 years old, Yitzhara already has him on a leash. By the time he's 20, he's a giant elephant. He's 300 pounds. But he's walking with a tiny little leash. The Yitzhara doesn't even have to try anymore. Yetzirah doesn't have to try anymore. Let's go look over there, look over there, look over there, look at every single woman that walks, look at her. So that's why you see the guys, they walk in the street, like you're one of those fountains of water. They look at anything that moves. If it has a body, if it has something, it goes. Even sometimes if it's a mannequin, they'll look at that too. Everything they look at. And wives sometimes ask, no, my husband, you know, he's not paying attention to me not paying attention to me he's hanging out with his friends he's not this he's not that I don't know I don't know what's the first question you ask do you have a TV in your house you have a TV in your house yes is the TV connected to a cable channel or some news network or it's connected to a computer where you're just watching let's say I don't know uh, some uh, pre-programmed uh, you know Torah or something like that no no he watches cable every day oh he watches cable okay that's why 
What do you mean? What does it have to do with him looking or me not paying attention or something like that? No, because he's already married to 50,000 other women. Every night he comes home, he sees on the news channel, on the HBO channel, on the Showtime channel, on all these channels, he sees all the women that he wants to be with. And then he looks at you, Tisha B'Av, you're in your pajamas. He says, this is what I have, this is what I have. He compares, he doesn't want to look at you anymore. It's your fault, not his fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. You let him look at other women, voluntary. You're even watching it with him. Oh, honey, let's watch Desperate Housewives. Oh, a show about immodest women. Just say, let's watch it. Let's just go to Ganom and have fun. Go to the beach there. It's your fault. It's your fault he doesn't like you. It's your fault he yells at you. It's your fault he thinks you're fat. It's your fault he thinks you're not this. It's your why? Because you're constantly telling him, go look at this girl, go look at this girl, go look at this one. You're bringing him the girls. What do you expect him to do? Not look? What do you expect? You're bringing it to him. You're bringing it to him. Honey, let's go watch the show together. Let's go to the movies. Watch this new actress that's half naked or sometimes completely naked, but she got $25 million and people think it's a good thing. Hashem pays them to their face to destroy them. Woman goes naked, shows the whole world that she, she, her body naked for $20 million. She's the stupidest person on earth. But you bring them to the movies to go watch her. Look, what do you think of her, honey? Well, I thought of her much better than I think of you right now, but I have to go home with you and not her. That's what, I re that's what he really wants to tell you. And when I'm going to be with you later, I'm going to be thinking about her. That's what's actually happening. But whose fault? It's not him. He's the elephant. You've become the trainer. The wife became the trainer. The wife became an employee of the Satan himself. Why? She's, she's bringing him to, to, the, to the wolves. And you, you're, you're surprised. He's looking at other women. He doesn't like you anymore. He doesn't want you anymore. He doesn't this. He doesn't that. So... All these women that are having shlom bite issues when it comes to that, the first question is, do you have a TV? Do you watch movies together? Do you do all that stuff? If you do, that's the reason. It's the first reason. Why? It's too much It's too much of a bait for him. Too much. No man can withstand it. We're not women. We don't think like that. Women look at a guy and they think about his personality. Oh, wow, he looks so nice. He's so funny. Ha, ha, ha. A guy doesn't think about a personality, and even if he's married to her for 20 years, he doesn't want to own our personality. Why? Because a guy's an animal. Without Torah, he's 100% an animal. So now, the Satan is training us since we're little babies. Only weapon we have is Torah. Only weapon we have. Without Torah, we're the elephant that's being pulled by a little string. And eventually, no string. He just tells us what to do. No, lift two legs, lift on your head, lift on your knee, lift on this. Without a string at all, you're already doing tricks. You're doing flips, you're doing this. Why? Trained really well. So he says, why? Why did this happen to us? Because you weren't excited to do mitzvot. It's not because you were excited for the sin. It's all started because you were a lazy bum and you didn't chase mitzvot. Instead of going to Beknesset, you want to sleep till 11. Instead of going to Shul Torah, and you, you wanted to watch it on YouTube. You didn't want to drive an extra half hour, an extra hour to go to Shul Torah. You wanted to watch it from the convenience of your couch with the popcorn. He says you weren't willing to do Mesirut Nefesh for the Torah. That means you didn't have the merit of Torah. And on top of that, you had to occupy the time with something. Shlomo HaMelech says, boredom leads to sin. If you do nothing, you're going to end up sinning. You have to do something. Now, the first sin, small sin, tiny sin. What's a small sin? One minute, one minute. Would you say one minute? How much bad could possibly happen in one minute? What could possibly go wrong with one minute? And if I told you that one minute, and really one second, is the difference between life and death spiritually forever. Would you...